Welcome back to Watch ND's exclusive live coverage of Signing Day 2014 for the Fighting Irish football team. And joining us now here in our FIDM studios is Pete Sampson of Irish Illustrated, who spends much of his year covering Notre Dame football yeah. recruiting. In fact, he has gone out on the road, and I guess the best test is the eye test. You've seen about half this class in person. So from the folks that you've seen, I'll, I'll let you decide who to talk about first. Who's really uh, stood out to you when you saw them play uh, this past fall? You know, I think the guy that impressed me most in terms of just the eyeball test was probably Alex Bars. I drove down to Nashville before the season started to see his opener. Uh, he plays for Montgomery Bell Academy down there. Just physically so well put together. He, he's very striking with just how big he is. Um, looks like a college offensive lineman right now and, and a superior athlete too. I think when you're looking at guys who are 300 pounds who are also very good basketball players, he takes boxing lessons, um, light on his feet, good athlete. It was during his senior season he actually I think returned a fumble about 80 yards for a touchdown reminiscent slightly of Stefan Tuitt in Ireland a couple years ago. Um, that's hard to see. You, you don't see offensive linemen at the, at the high school level that are, are that good of athletes. So he's a guy that really struck me out of the gate. You know, our folks watching on uh, Watch ND just got to see uh, Justin Brent talk a little bit. I mean, he's really bulked up since I saw him at the beginning of the fall season. Your thoughts on him? Yeah, that's a, that's a great compliment to Notre Dame's evaluation because when they offered him, it was the summer going into his junior year. I saw him at a combine that summer down at Champaign. Good looking player, didn't blow me away. Notre Dame makes the offer really ahead of the game there. Then all of a sudden his junior year is, is great. He turns into a Rivals 100 prospect, got, uh, played at the, the Rivals Five Star Challenge in Chicago, got an invite to the Under Armour All-America game even though he didn't play down there. And he'll finish as the highest ranked receiver that signed with Notre Dame under Brian Kelly. So uh, just a really dynamic athlete, sort of a, I don't know, like a poor man's Michael Floyd in some ways in terms of his physical strength. Um, so maybe not that five-star future top 10 pick, but really a player who can come in and help you right away, even if he didn't enroll early. But the fact that he's here now, physically, he is just so very well put together. High IQ, high, high character kid, too. So I think he's a guy that's going to fit naturally with Notre Dame. You know, it's funny that you mentioned Michael Floyd because Michael Birch, who is the media relations director for the football program, was just in here, and he said the exact same thing. And if he can come halfway, three-quarters yeah. of the way of Michael Floyd, uh, he's going to be an awfully good one. Defensive lineman Jay Hayes out of Brooklyn, New York, is also considered to be a big pickup for the Irish. Yeah, Jay Hayes, to me, it's like if you could take the personalities of Captain Lewis Moore and Lewis Nix and fuse them together, I think you'd have somebody like Jay Hayes. I was at uh, Poly Prep in Brooklyn, I think it was right before the Michigan game, and uh, just sort of saw his environment, what he comes from. Great story, great personality, uh, kind of from a rough area of Brooklyn, is on scholarship at Poly Prep, and really appreciative of the academic opportunities that he has there. Knows that he wouldn't be signing with Notre Dame today if he wasn't on scholarship there. Um, and I think he's a guy that if they needed to play him right away, maybe he could. Uh, I mean, you've heard Brian Kelly say on the lines it's very difficult. They prefer not to do that. But really a big-time athlete. Competition in New York you know, certainly isn't like in Florida. But I really like what this guy brings to the table. Big 6'4 kid. Uh, big personality. And I think he's somebody that's really going to buy in. A big fan of Mike Elson, who did, who did a nice job recruiting him. And certainly Notre Dame has really become today's tight end U across the country, and they got another good one in Tyler Luatua from La Mirada, California. Yeah, he was a guy that Notre Dame targeted very early. I think this is one of Brian Kelly's first visits after the 2012 regular season when he gets out on the road and sees high school. Um, senior year, the team struggled a little bit. He was at the Under Armour All-American game. He's cut from a little bit of a different cloth than some of Notre Dame's other tight ends more of a shorter, maybe a throwback type of tight end, uh, but certainly has a lot of athletic ability. Saw him over the summer in Chicago at the Rivals Five Star Challenge. Uh, just, a, just a good athlete. I think he's a guy that maybe could help you at a few different positions. Offensive line always so critical, and uh, Notre Dame really did a good job getting some good offensive linemen. You got to see Sam Mustafer out of Olney, Maryland. Yeah, another kid I saw this summer in Chicago at the Rivals Five Star Challenge. A little up and down there, but you saw him progress as the season went on. And when he showed up at the Under Armour All-America game in Orlando after the year, much improved player strength was better. Confidence was better. Great personality fit for Notre Dame. I think one of the important sidebars with Mustafer to me is getting a foothold in the Washington, D.C. area. They got Devin Butler a year ago. That's a place, a part of the country where with the ACC ties now, Notre Dame should have some more success. And Good Council is a big-time program there. So 
to get a foothold there and get Mustafer out there, I think is critical. You know, I love it when you get players out of Texas because I don't know if there are any bad players in Texas. And if you've gone down there, folks, you know how important high school football is down there. And they got Nick Watkins, defensive back out of Dallas. What kind of player is he? One of my favorite guys in the class. Uh, I went and saw him play live the night before the Shamrock Series game. Uh, Brian Kelly and Tony Alford were at the game as well. Kind of like a Kavari Russell type with longer arms. Maybe it's the fact that he wears number six. Uh, Two-way player, can do a little bit of everything. And I think really one of Notre Dame's top cornerback targets from the start. Kerry Cook's really, really impressed in this recruiting campaign in Texas. It has been a long time since Notre Dame has gotten three kids out of Texas that Texas wanted. I think you really have to look over the last decade to find three combined. Uh, so to do three in one year, outstanding. Uh, this is a kid, Alabama wanted him, Texas wanted him, Stanford wanted him. Uh, so for him, for Notre Dame to get him, get your top corner target this cycle, is just an outstanding job by Kerry Crooks and the staff. Now, folks, if you're just joining us, uh, this is Pete Sampson of Irish Illustrated, and the players we're talking about now are players that Pete was able to go and see in person. And again, tape is great, uh, but that real eye test is to see them in person. And uh, the next guy we want to talk about that uh, you have seen is Nick Wisher, tight end out of Chicago. Yeah, and he's a guy that I saw as a high school junior and a senior. Uh, as a junior, sort of looked like maybe a, a Tyler Eifert type, maybe a little shorter, sort of that lean, tall. Is he a big receiver? Is he a tight end who needs to put on weight? Played through a shoulder or problem as a junior, got that fixed, really bulked up, played in the, the Army All-American Bowl. Was good in practices down there. I think a, a plus athlete for that position uh, and, and somebody who can help Notre Dame. I don't know if it's going to be this year because he can put on more weight and Notre Dame has some quality depth there. But sort of, I think he's a guy that fits in line with what Notre Dame has done at tight end. Eifer, you know, even somebody like a Durham Smythe last year, Mike Hireman, that kind of body type, I think he's going to look like he'll fit into Notre Dame's meeting room at tight end almost from the day he walks on campus. Now, certainly you didn't have to spend a, a lot of uh, travel money to get up to uh, Barry and Springs and see defensive lineman Jonathan Williams, who's a great story, kind of got on people's radars late, and, and then he got a lot of offers, including one from Missouri and then Notre Dame. Yeah, and Michigan tried to get in on him too unsuccessfully. Uh, I think he's a guy that four years from now we could look back and be like, he was only a three-star prospect because he's a guy with massive upside. He's very long. I think he could sort of be that menacing outside linebacker in Notre Dame scheme and <clears throat> I think he's a guy that once he puts on weight two three years from now you're not even going to recognize the kid that signed with Notre Dame today um, and his backstory is amazing too maybe similar to Jay Hayes in some ways really appreciative of the opportunities that he has wants to be closer to home and I think Notre Dame's getting a really a long-range project here that is a great project. I think he's probably the most underrated guy in, in Notre Dame's class today. Now, you also had the chance to see defensive back Drew Tranquil. Yeah, I did. I saw him at a combine a year ago, and I went into that combine in Indianapolis. Uh, I saw Jalen Smith down there the, a year prior, and I didn't know too much about him, but he was a guy that, like, man, this guy is really in the first in line in the drills, competitive, got a streak to him, uh, just seems like he plays with a lot of swagger. And to see his recruitment unfold the way he did was fascinating to me. I, I think he's a guy that can help you get safety, linebacker, special teams from day one. Um, you know, competition in Fort Wayne wasn't maybe at an elite level, but I think we saw from Jalen Smith last year, if you can play, you can play. Uh, and I think Drew Tranquil's a guy with the right mental attitude and the right mental makeup to be a, a significant player in Notre Dame, maybe early. And that pretty much covers uh, the guys that you were able to see in person. So of the folks that you were not able to see, who really jumps off uh, that uh, television monitor to you? You know, Niall Sykes from Chicago is, is fascinating to me because he was a guy who played defensive end as a junior, transferred schools, moved to linebacker. And really that just sort of blew up from there. Notre Dame took notice, offered late and got him. He's intriguing to me. And then Pete Makwa. I think just from a really out of nowhere story there from Staten Island. Uh, and I think one of the things that impresses me about Pete is that this is a kid, he could walk to the, the public school by his house. Instead, he takes a bus one hour each way to get to the private school, St. Joseph by the Sea, because he values education at that level. And he knew that's how he needs, that's, that's what's going to take him somewhere in life, not football. So when you hear about those backstories, those are the guys that are really intriguing to me. Uh, he's got a lot of room for development. He's he's very raw, but uh, he's got the, the mental makeup, mental toughness, uh, and I think he's going to be a great fit at Notre Dame down the road. 
second consecutive top 10 class for this program. Why is the momentum still so strong for the Notre Dame football program in terms of elite athletes wanting to come play here? Well, it's a product that they can sell, but they also do a very good job selling it. I think it's a balanced recruiting staff from top to bottom. They don't have guys that love to do it and guys that hate to do it. Everyone does a good job. They all pull their own weight. And I think especially in a, in a time where both coordinators leave in one off season, that could be a little unsettling for some guys. That's where cross recruiting comes in. Whether it's Mike Elson with Jay Hayes, you know, Kerry Cook's down in Texas, Mike Dembreck on the West Coast. They did a good job making guys feel part of the program before they were officially part of the program today. So I think probably the big themes for me is Notre Dame got stronger where it was already strong on the offensive line. They got some good numbers on the defensive line. And the job they did in Texas was very impressive to me. And lastly, just the guys that they maybe came back around on late in December, whether it be Sykes, Williams, uh, Pete Makwa, those kinds of players. Notre Dame did a great job keeping open mind about reevaluating some guys that maybe as juniors they thought were good and they came back around as seniors and thought these guys made major improvements let's pull the trigger on them and they they landed a lot of them. Coach Kelly's made it pretty clear in recent weeks that he wants to play a much more up-tempo offense. Basically the offense everybody thought he was going to bring with right. him uh, from Cincinnati. In terms of the kinds of playmakers that you need to make that offense a success and to make the big plays that are a foundation of the offense, how did Notre Dame do? You know, I thought they did okay in that regard. I, I like Brent and Corey Holmes, the other receiver they got from St. Thomas Aquinas, but this was much more of a power class. It was almost more of a class that if you wanted to get back to playing how you played in 2012, was more of a smash mouth run first team. Those are the kind of guys they got. It makes running back a big priority next year and receiver a priority next year. But I think Brent's a guy that can come in and help you right away. And then Corey Holmes is a kid, kind of like a TJ Jones in terms of his skill set, can do a little bit of everything well uh, and comes from a very sophisticated program at St. Thomas Aquinas down in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, so he's coming in, should be ready to go mentally. Um, so I, I think they've got a couple receivers in this class that can come in and help you as freshmen if you need it. So next year that, that enhances the depth. I don't, I don't see either Holmes or Brent coming in and being overwhelmed by the playbook or life at Notre Dame or college football. And Pete, certainly uh, it's a busy day for you. Yes, we want is. to thank you for taking some time to uh, to chat with us. And uh, do you like the coaches? Do you like go to the Bahamas? Um, not, not that the coaches do. Do you get out of town after this? Uh, I, unfortunately, I'm snowed in right now. <laughs> I, I will not be playing at Pebble Beach this weekend. All right. Well, neither will I. They don't yeah. invite us low-profile folks. Coming up next, Mike Frank of Mike Frank's Irish Sports Daily will be on this set to offer his thoughts on Notre Dame's football recruiting class of 2014. Oh!